mechanical flows in which you know as an SGLT2 inhibitor. And uh, it's the kind of study actually that Professor Zinman would have loved to have done with the Emperor egg outcome, but unfortunately they didn't have biomarkers. So, you all know the empirical flows in Emperor egg outcome study results that there was a tremendous effect in cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization. The question we asked in this study, which is in patients with type 2 diabetes, over, over the course of 104 weeks where we had serial blood samples, was does canagliflozin relative to placebo alter the change in nt bmp and high sensory troponin, as well as two other cardiac biomarkers, ST2, which is more like a kind of fibrosis, and galactin-3. And to cut a long story short, that there was around about 216 patients in placebo, not around about exactly, 415 canagliflozin, so it's a reasonably, you know, size study. The other point is that both nt bmp and ST and uh, high sensitive troponin are very strong cardiac predictors. I would suggest to you that all the novel biomarkers we're testing in the world, these are the two that are most likely to be more widely used in the future. Forget all the other novel stuff, these are the ones that are really matter, I think. So, what did we find? Well, the key results are actually in figure one, where the median percent change in baseline biomarkers is shown. And in, in, the, in a true statistical analysis, we compared the change in placebo over time, over the course of 104 weeks, uh, in, in percentage change in those who received uh, placebo, so that's the green. So you can see the nt pro PMP in people with diabetes over the course of two years rose about 20% significantly. Whereas those who got canagliflozin, there was no such rise. Potentially a rise towards the end, but it was clearly attenuated at each temp time point. So for whatever mechanism, uh, canagliflozin attenuates the rise of nt pro BMP to a small extent in people with diabetes. High sensory troponin showed something broadly similar, but a slight difference. In this case, troponin probably did rise over the course of two years in people with placebo by about 10%. But notice with canagliflozin, there was a slight reduction at 26 weeks, 52 weeks, and back to baseline levels at 104 weeks. So again, it looks like an attenuated rise of high sensory troponin with canagliflozin relative to placebo. ST2 did not change. Galactin-3 did not change consistently. There was a slight rise early, but it wasn't maintained. And on that basis, we concluded that canagliflozin relative to placebo does have an effect on high sensory troponin and BMP to a modest extent in people with diabetes. We then, to contextualize that, that result broadly fits with the results in empiric outcomes that this is a drug that affects the hemodynamic pathways and, and in a sense reduces cardiac stress and these results broadly concur with that. This last point, this paper has been published already in JAK so if you want to read more details if I don't answer the questions properly you can read it in JAK. Thank you very much.